Welcome. Hope you find this clip useful. Please subscribe and share to keep the channel going so we can make more helpful video clips. Reflex arc, which is how a reflex action happens. It's the pathway of a reflex action. And it has to do with the nervous system. It's there to protect the body against harm. Uh, simply because even though our nervous system functions quickly, if I can bypass the brain, um, it, it takes a shorter route, it takes a shortcut, normally just through the, the spinal cord, so that an action can happen faster. Which means that we we speed up the reaction and only afterwards realize, okay, this or that has happened. We uh, only realize that uh, we might have touched something hot or stung by a bee or uh, whatever the situation is. What we're going to do now is just go through the questions. This very first question is, says to us, the diagram below shows a part of the central nervous system. Notice it's the it's a past paper from 2013, the November 2013 paper. If you follow the pathway, you can see over here that the stimulus is, let me get a different color here, the stimulus in this case is heat. It's felt by the finger, it goes into the sensory nerve and then enters via the, the dorsal side of the nerve cord. There's the dorsal side of the nerve cord. And then this structure over here is also a commonly asked one. You can see that over there, where the ink is now, that is the, the sensory nerve, which is a unipolar neuron. The sensory neuron has its cell body. And in that area, we find, we always find a bulge and that bulge we call a ganglion, a ganglion. So that ganglion, uh, the, uh, we say it's the dorsal ganglion. So the dorsal ganglion uh, is where the nucleus is of the sensory neuron. It then goes into the dorsal side of the spinal cord. And what's unique about the spinal cord, and I'll show this to you later in this lesson as well, is that the, the white and the gray matter is in specific positions. Uh, let me just go to a picture to illustrate that, and I'll, then I'll describe to you what is white and gray matter. Okay, so if we take a look at, just make this a bit smaller. If we take a look at any um, any neuron, now this is a motor neuron, so it's um, but it's consisting out of two main parts, and the two main parts is of course the cell body, and then the axon, and the axon of course has the myelin sheath, and the myelin sheath is consisting out of like you learned yesterday, the Schwann cell, and the Schwann cell contains a lot of fat. So it's got a white color. Well, the cell body doesn't have that white substance inside. It hasn't got as much fat inside it. So it tends to have a grayish color. While the axon part tends to have a whitish color. Now, if we take a look at the brain and the spinal cord, as you see over there, then what we find is that the gray matter, all the cell bodies of all of the combined nerves tends to concentrate in that X area that we see, that butterfly area that I'm marking now. They tend to, the con, they tend to concentrate over there and all of the axons with the myelin sheath tends to concentrate in the areas on the outside. Now, it, What's, what's quite unique is that in the brain, that is actually turned around. All of the cell bodies are actually on the outside of the brain. And 
all of my white substances, all of the whites, the axons are concentrated on the inside. So in the brain, the white is on the inside and in the spinal cord, it's on the outside. And of course that, that white is because of the myelin sheaf of the axons. And then the gray is the normal, that's the cell bodies of a, a nerve. So if I take a look at a nerve, there we go. That forms the gray matter over there. That's the, let me just color it the same way as that previously. That's the gray matter. All of the combined cell bodies is the gray matter. And all of the myelin sheaths of the axons, that's the white matter inside our nervous system. So let's get back to the question. Stimulus is converted to an impulse and then goes down via the sensory neuron into the spinal cord. Then there's a synapse over there, the interneuron, another synapse, and a motor neuron that leaves via the ventral side and goes to an effector, which is a muscle. Now, important about that is that pathway. You need to know that pathway very well. As I said to you, seven, eight marks could easily come from this um, uh, in, in, the, in the paper, in paper one. Now, let's label this quickly. Give the labels for each of the following. Label C. So you now you've got to take a look carefully because there's some trick, trick things here. Label C is the muscle. So if I say muscle or effector, you're going to get the mark. Then B, it says microscopic gap D. So it indicates that it's indicating the gap in between the, in this case, the interneuron and the motor neuron. And that is a synapse or a synaptic gap. If we take a look at E, E, that is your spinal cord. Um, if you say to me as well, if you say to me that's the white matter of the spinal cord, that would also be correct. Then, for F, that is your interneuron. F is pointing to the interneuron over there. And then for G, G, now G, there was a trick here. Um, you will see that if you take a look at the point of connection of G, it actually doesn't touch the neuron. It does not touch the sensory neuron or unipolar neuron. It actually touches the nerve, the full nerve. And so you have to, in that case, be very careful because that is then the spinal nerve. You can also say is the dorsal root of the spinal nerve or dorsal root because it enters on the dorsal side of the spinal column. But we cannot say in that specific case, they did not accept, they did not accept that that is the sensory neuron because it didn't touch the sensory neuron. So just take a look carefully at your diagram at what they're pointing at because that is sometimes a, um, a confusion point. Inside that spinal nerve or inside that dorsal root, there's a sensory neuron. So if they ask me what neuron is that, I can say sensory neuron. But if I take a look at the point where it's indicating it's the dorsal root or it's the spinal nerve. Okay. Then 2.1.2. Explain one consequence for the body if A was damaged. Now, if A was damaged, A is pointing to that sensory neuron that we are talking about. It's got various implications. I'm not going to feel the burning from the candle. I will not feel the burning from the candle. That's the first thing. So I won't feel it. And if I don't feel it, I'm not going to react to it. So the whole reflex arc is broken. I'm not going to react to it because I'm not feeling the stimulus. I'm not going to sense the stimulus. Now, a lot of times in, in one of the later questions we're going to discuss today in, in, um, in here is they ask you, what if neuron B, for example, the motor neuron was damaged. That means I am going to feel it, but I cannot react to it. 
because the pathway going to the muscle that makes it react is not there. But in this case, I can't even feel it in the first place. Give two examples of reflex actions. So there's various examples of reflex actions. Okay, so um, we have a, a common one that they test your reflexes on is of course a knee jerk motion. If you pull your hand away when it's being burned or you prick it on a, a thorn, um, if you touch a hot object, blinking, coughing, sneezing, anything that's gonna have an, um, a quick immediate response. And because that, that is what a reflex uh, reaction is. It's a quick immediate response to protect the body from damage. Then they ask you to draw a label diagram of neuron B to show its structure. You must have a heading um, to, to go and according to the diagram rules I would have labeled on a specific side. I would have labeled maybe all on this side instead of labeling it around the diagram. These diagrams in pencils, label lines in pen, and then labels in pen. Please no color, don't use color. Uh, but that's a basic motor neuron that they have asked. It's a basic motor neuron that you have to draw. So you just have to draw a basic motor neuron in this case. So they ask you provide labels for region D, region D. Okay, so region D, that is your gray matter. Gray matter, in the case of my spinal, my spinal column, my gray matter is on the inside and my white matter is on the outside. So that is the gray matter that you see over there. Then next question, B, they asked neuron E. Neuron E, so if we take a look, that's an interneuron. Write down the letter of the part, which now be careful of this question, because if you're going to give me the name, that's wrong. They're not going to, they're not going to mark the name. They ask, give you the letter of, because they want you to identify on this specific diagram. What is the part that does that function? So they ask, write down the letter of the part, which transmits impulses to the central nervous system towards the central nervous system. So that's going to be your sensory neuron. And in this case, it's neuron A. Neuron A, the sensory neuron. Then A. So your answer is A. Your, uh, your answer is not sensory neuron. It's just A. Then the O's contain cerebrospinal fluid. Okay, so we haven't discussed that as a structure yet, but you, uh, you had to go through the notes. Uh, from the previous lesson and it's actually over there that C contains the cerebrospinal fluid. Now the word cerebrospinal fluid, if we take a look at the brain, it's the, you've got the cerebrum um, and then um, spinal, spinal, the spinal cord. So it goes around the cerebrum but inside the spine and so it contains the liquid that uh, a liquid the cerebrospinal fluid. And in the case of the cerebrospinal fluid, what happens is if, if I ever get a lumbar punch, that is actually, they draw li that liquid that's inside there. They draw that liquid. Explain 2.1.3. Explain the effect of the reflex arc if part label B was damaged. So as I said to you, now they're asking you not if that part is damaged, not if the sensory neuron is damaged, but if the motor neuron is damaged. And the implications of this is that if my motor neuron is damaged, I cannot react to the pain I'm feeling. So there's no reflex reaction um, because it is not, it is cut off going to the muscle. The, the nerve telling the muscle to react is cut off. So I will be able to feel the pain. I will experience the pain, but I will not be able to react towards that pain. 2.1.4. The nerve pathway in the above response is about one and a half meters in length. Okay, so one and a half meters in length. 
a nerve impulse travels at 75 meters per second. Sorry for the spelling mistake that I made in over there. It's meters per second. We could have written it differently as well, meter stroke S. Um, but those of you that are of course taking physical sciences, you would be familiar to the way that they write this. And that needs to be a superscript. That minus one needs to be actually a superscript. That's meters per second. Then use this information to calculate the time taken for this reflex action to occur and show all of your working. So here we go. One and a half meters needs to travel one and a half meters. And you times that by 75 meters a second to get 0 0.02 seconds. Now, somewhere in paper one, and somewhere in paper two, you're gonna get a calculation question. It's not gonna count for much. It's probably gonna count uh, as this one is around three marks. You might get a second one and counting another three or two marks, but in total, you might get three, four, five marks. That's gonna be some type of calculation question, uh, a percentage you have to work out or a percentage change you have to work out. Just think through the question. I know we're not all maths, um, boffins. I am not either, but most of the times I am able to figure out how these calculations work. So just read carefully, use the math knowledge that you have, whether you're taking math lit or math, not going to make a difference. Just think it through, write it down, and write out the calculation. That's important. Write out the calculation. Because if you don't write out the calculation and you only get an answer, and your answer is wrong. They're going to give you no marks. But if you do write the calculation and something in your calculation is right, but you have the final answer wrong, then they're still going to give you some marks. So in this case, they would have given you a mark for people, the calculation. They give you a mark for the answer and they give you a mark for the, the unit over there, the seconds. If you don't write seconds, they don't give you that mark. Sometimes they will give you a mark. Let me just show you for maybe this one, a mark for that one, and then a total mark for the answer. But then if you exclude the unit, they're not going to give you the mark. So remember, units are important. If you've been in my class in the previous years, you would have remembered that I said to you, units are important. Remember, I can give you a hundred. I can give you a hundred. And if I give you a hundred, you're going to say, yay, a hundred, give me a hundred. Yes, yeah, I'm going to give you a hundred cents. So then you say, oh, so you know what, keep your hundred cents. You probably need it more to, uh, than me. Or I can tell you that I'm going to give you a hundred, not cents, but I can give you a hundred rands. Then you're going to say to me, yes, thank you very much, sir. I can do maybe something with a hundred rands. I can go to the top shop or whatever. Okay, so units are important. Remember that. Okay, let's go to the next question. Explain the significance of a reflex action. So it helps to protect the body by reacting quickly. So the, the whole route takes a shortcut, it bypasses the brain so that our reactions are faster, so it protects us from harming our body by taking a quicker route. Does the brain know about this? Not immediately, but yes, it does afterwards realize that something has happened. It just takes a shortcut and then another nerve goes up to the brain to, uh, showing that there's a difference. The diagram below shows the human brain, a longitudinal section, the spinal cord, the transverse section, and the right leg. If we take a look at that, it says four options are provided as possible answers to the following questions. Choose the answer and write only the letter A to D next to the question number and, and uh, in the answer book, for example, 1.4.60. So this is typically what you would get if you had to have a, a reflex art question within your multiple choice questions. This is what you'll get. And even in this one, you'll see it's five questions related to one single diagram. And each of these questions in an exam paper is going to count two marks. So this can get you a total of 10 marks 
in the in the exam even though it's all short questions but you need to interpret it very carefully so let's take a look at the different questions the first question ladies and gentlemen is asking us 1.4.1 which part of the brain is indicated by the number one and that is your cerebrum that's your cerebrum or a is the answer cerebrum is indicated thank you for the person who colored that i just wanted to do that myself so part number one is the cerebrum um, it is the part that contains higher thinking um, it is the part that contains your memories and your emotions it's also the part that is in control of your body movements so that is the cerebrum 1.4.2 is asking which one of the following is a function of the part of the brain numbered two okay so then they tell they give you various options uh perception of sensations no the cerebrum does that hey so it's not a it is the cerebrum that does perception of sensations and i want to know number two which is over there let me just make it a different color that is the brain stem the brainstem. Also, a large part of that brainstem, we will commonly refer to that as the medulla oblongata because most of that brainstem is the medulla oblongata. Center of control of breathing. Center of control of breathing. No, no, it's not the center of control of breathing. Maintenance of equilibrium and balance, and that is the one. The brainstem is responsible for maintaining our balance um, and center of regulation of body temperature no it's not okay next question 1.1 point 1.4.3 uh, under normal circumstances which number part coordinates the movements of the legs now be careful of this question be very careful of this question it's a trick question it doesn't ask you what controls the movement it controls you what uh, it asks you what coordinates the movement not control coordinates the movement and although our cerebrum controls our movement the coordination or the um, and the balance in those things are controlled by the small brain the small brain which is the cerebellum cerebellum so number five is the correct answer for 1.4.3 so the cerebellum controls the coordination of movement um I, I, I quickly want to see if i can share something with you now okay so when i walk i need to move my left leg and my right arm together or my right arm and my left leg together and that feels normal but when we move our left leg and our left arm together it feels awkward to us it feels awkward because of number five because of number five it says to us it's not normal you you're out of balance and so that's why we feel that it's an awkward movement asks us which of uh, which one of the following is false about the role of the brain and the spinal cord involved in the action diagram which of the following is false about the role of the brain and the spinal cord involved in the action in the diagram it says to us the first one the brain is aware of the uh, of the tap on the knee with a hammer is it aware yes it is aware okay so that's not false um it does realize it a bit lighter than the reflex action but it still does experience it then the second one says an effector is stimulated an effector is stimulated by the nerve uh, by the motor nerve to affect the response to bring a response but so that's true then the spinal cord receives a sensory impulse from the knee yes it does it receives an impulse from the knee then the last one says to us the brain receives the sensory impulses from the spinal cord and sends motor impulses to the leg muscles and that's incorrect this is a reflex reaction it bypasses the brain the brain does experience it but the brain is not the one giving the instruction to to the the muscle to contract and move the leg it is the spinal cord not the brain and so d is false 
because although the brain experiences the experience, it's not the one to give the order for the leg muscle to move. That is done by the, the spine. Now, the last question that we had to do is an essay question. And just a few things on that essay question is for you to remember the basic steps. Now, these are the steps given every uh, that I've given you in the notes. And so you study that like a little song. And every time you get this, this question, you just change what is, of course, my, um, in this example, um, being pricked uh, by a pin or from a hot surface. So you change the example, you just tell them, okay, the stimulus is this, and the rest of the, the, the little rhyme is still the same. So you receive the stimulus. The stimulus is converted into an impulse. The impulse goes along the sensory neuron towards the spinal cord along the dorsal root of the spinal nerve. In the spinal cord, the sensory neuron makes a synapse synapse, you get a mark for synaptic contact or synapse with the connector or interneuron. And then the impulses are transmitted along the motor neuron, along the ventral root of the spinal nerve to the effector organ or muscle, which contracts and pulls away the hand or has the reaction. So you basically, in any of these questions, all of the, this, the whole rhyme from there, it's going to be the same. The only thing that you're changing is the very first sentence. You're changing to whatever stimulus there is. And the last sentence you change to the reaction that you are receiving in this specific example. But the, uh, the, the rest of the little rhyme is still the same. So you just, you study that like a parrot um, so that you can say it off by heart. Thank you for watching. Hope it was helpful. Please subscribe and share to keep the channel going so we can make more helpful video clips.